Hi, my name is Craig Foreman and I am a full-time stock, options, and futures trader and educator. Recently, I decided that I needed to upgrade my computer's hardware to allow me to see additional charts and graphs. I had been using a graphics card that supported two monitors and I wanted to use four. I searched the internet for information on how to build a trading workstation with quad monitors, but I wasn't able to find much. There are a few companies that sell expensive custom computer setups for traders, but I knew that I could accomplish the same thing inexpensively if I did it myself. This video will take you through all the steps I went through to upgrade my computer system from two to four monitors. I was able to add two new monitors, a quad monitor mount, and a quad graphics card for under $350. This is the basic setup that I started out with. It's a dual monitor system using 24 inch widescreen monitors and I'm driving them from a Dell ATI Radeon video card that supports two monitors. The first thing I did was to purchase a wireless mouse and keyboard to get rid of the wires and free up desk space. This is a compact keyboard so it takes up less space. It's from Logitech. It's called Model K360 and it sells for around $20. The mouse is also from Logitech and is less than $20. The neat thing about this system is they use a common receiver, a little tiny USB receiver, and they call it a unifying receiver. They both use the same receiver. Logitech provides software for this mouse, model M325, so that you can program the buttons and the wheel to do different tasks that you'd normally do on a keyboard. In fact, I found I was hardly using my keyboard at all. And since it was very small and compact, I just stuck it in my desk drawer. And I just pulled out when I need it, which isn't very often because I do most everything with the mouse. When building a quad monitor display, one has to consider how to mount the displays. I decided that I would build a 2x2 two two matrix of displays, mounting my two new displays on top of the existing ones. In order to do this, I needed a way to mount the displays up high. Some monitors provide an adjustable stand that allows you to raise and lower them a little, but it would not be nearly high enough to hold them above the lower displays. I looked around for a quad display mount and decided to get this stand called the Mount It Quad Freestanding Monitor Stand. This one will accommodate up to 24 inch monitors and runs about $100 new, but you can occasionally find used ones a little cheaper on Amazon or eBay. There are two basic types, freestanding and desk mount. The desk mount versions are a little cheaper, but beware they have to be bolted to the desk with either a clamp or a screw. The freestanding mounts like this one have a large heavy base, don't have to be bolted to the desk, but the base does take up a significant amount of desk space since it is big and heavy. I chose the freestanding style. Note that these mounts are really nice because they allow you to independently adjust the position and the tilt of the four monitors in the display. Also, the pull mount allows you to independently adjust the height of each bank of two monitors. For my third and fourth monitors, I chose to get a slightly smaller screen size and I was able to purchase two Dell E2214H 22 inch monitors on sale for around $90 each. Be aware that the screen size on monitors and TVs is a diagonal measurement. Almost all modern monitors have a universal mounting system called VISA which allows you to use standard wall mounts. For this monitor, the VISA, mount, the VISA mounting screws are hidden under this panel, which is easily removed. Now you can see that the Visa mounting screws are visible. This is a Visa 100 by 100 mount, which means the screws are 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters apart. For larger monitors and heavier monitors, you may have a larger Visa size, like 200 by 200. So make sure your monitor mount matches your monitor size and mounting system. Also, the monitors will typically come with a desk stand like this, which of course you don't need with a Visa mount. For this monitor, the desk stand is easily removed by pressing on the monitor here and then simply 
I'm clipping the stand. Now you can see the video input connectors on this monitor and you see there's two types. There's a 15 pin D sub connector over here and a DVI connector over here. We'll talk more about this later but for this project we're going to use the DVI connector. With the FISA mounting screws exposed, mounting the two monitors is simply a matter of removing the four mounting screws from the monitor Placing the monitor in place on the visa stand and then tightening the four screws down so that the monitor is attached to the mounting stand. Once the two upper monitors are securely mounted to the top mounting brackets, we plug in the power cable and the DVI video cable, and then we tighten down the screws on the video cable to keep it secure. Note that we can dress the cables easily with the built-in cable clamps that are provided on the monitor mount. Now at this point I have filled all four positions on the quad monitor stand with my display monitors. On the bottom I've got my two initial 24 inch monitors. Those are made by AOC. They're model E2450 SWD. And on the top I've added my two new Dell 22 inch monitors model E2214H. At this point I can move the entire assembly over to my desk and I can make the final adjustments on the tilt and angle of each monitor. Now at this point I've got the monitors on the stand back on my desk. I've still got my original dual graphics card in. I haven't put the new graphics card in yet but um, it was quite heavy when I brought it over. You might ask, you might get some help in carrying the monitors over with the stand. It's, it's pretty heavy. You can see I didn't even use all the height available. Um, I got probably another 10 inches of height I could have used, but I wanted to get the monitors down as close to eye level as I could. Now it's time to talk about the PC and the video cards. This is the PC that I'm installing the video card into. This is a Dell Optiplex 980 and it's what's called a mini tower chassis. Now we'll look inside the chassis. Now this is the inside of the PC with the ch chassis removed. You see two card slots. The top one, the black one here, is called the PCI Express or PCIe slot. That's the one we're going to be using for the graphics card. The other slot is just called a PCI card slot. The PCI Express slots come in two versions. There's a PCIe 16 and a PCIe 1. The long one you see here is the PCI 16 and that's the kind of slot we're going to use. If you just see a little tiny uh, connector only like an inch long that's a PCIe times 1. We don't want to use that kind of slot. Now this is the old ATI Radian dual monitor card that I took out of my computer. This is the PCIe 16 card type. If it was just this long and you only saw that front part, that would be PCIe times 1. But when it's long, it's a PCIe times 16. This card had an adapter cable that looked like this that allowed you to connect up to two uh, D sub 15 monitors. I investigated the available video cards that could drive four monitors and I came up with two choices. The ATI Fire Pro 2450 MultiView card and the NVIDIA Quadro NVS420 card. Both of these cards are built in the low profile form factor so they could fit in either a mini tower chassis or a full-size chassis. These cards come in two versions PCIe times 1 
and PCIe times 16. The PCIe by 16 version is a bit more expensive, but it can move data much more quickly. I would not recommend using any graphics card that has the PCIe by one slot. It is going to run too slow. Pay a little more and get a PCIe by 16 card. And make sure that you have a PCIe by 16 slot available in your chassis in order to use the card. After looking at comments on both graphics cards, I chose the NVIDIA Quadro NVS420 card. I'm sure that the ATI Fire Pro card would have worked, but I was more familiar with NVIDIA as a graphics company, and I was able to find a used one on eBay for around $80. If you buy a used card, make sure that you get the PCIe by 16 version, and make sure that you get it with the adapter cables. If you can't find one that comes with the adapter cables, you will need to buy them separately because you need them to connect to your displays. Both of these video cards include 512 megabytes of onboard memory and include a variable speed cooling fan to control heat. The specs state that the card can draw up to 35 or 40 watts, but I have found that for my applications in trading, the card runs quite cool. If it is used extensively for gaming or 3D modeling, it might consume more power. Now this is the NVIDIA Quadro NVS420 card that we're going to install, the quad video card. This is Notice the bracket is a full height bracket. I'm going to have to change this bracket because I have a mini tower case. This is the adapter cable that you need to connect to the displays. You see the cable has four DVI ports for the four monitors that you're going to connect. So in order to use this in my mini tower, I'm going to remove this bracket and replace it with this half height bracket that I got on eBay. And that's just a simple matter of undoing the screw here and these two mounting screws here. Now the new low profile video card, the quad video card, has been loaded into the PC chassis. And we can now connect the cable to the connector on the side here so that we'll be able to drive the monitors. Now is the time when it all comes together. We have the monitor bank set up, we have the graphics card installed, and we are ready to power it on. Before we start, let me say that if you were previously using the built-in graphics on your motherboard, with most PCs, Windows will automatically recognize that a graphics card is installed and will disable the onboard graphics. If your PC does not do this, you may need to go into the computer settings on startup and disable the onboard graphics. I would suggest starting up with just one monitor plugged in. You want this to be your main monitor, the one that you see the startup screen on. When the computer boots up, it should recognize that a new graphics card had been installed and in the case of the NVIDIA Quadro NVS420, Windows should find the correct driver automatically and load it. If for some reason the NVS420 driver is not found, you can go to the NVIDIA website to download the driver. After the computer boots up, the graphics card will be in some default mode, which should produce an image, but it may not be at the resolution that you want and it should detect the one monitor that you have connected in the system. Right click on any open space on the startup screen and select screen resolution. Take a look at what is shown after the word display. In this case you can see that it has recognized my main monitor as an AOC 2450W monitor which is correct. If you do not see the make and model number of your monitor then you need to load the correct driver. In order to do this, click on Advanced Settings, Monitor, Properties, Driver, and Update Driver. Where then you can either point to a file on your computer where you have downloaded the correct driver, or if you have a driver disk, you can point to the disk and navigate until you find the driver. After you do this, the correct make and model number of your monitor should show up after the display. 
Then you can pick the resolution that you want. I want to use a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is typical for widescreen displays. So I pick that, and then you click OK. At that point, your monitor will black out, and it will come back on, and you say Keep Changes, with the correct resolution. Now, you can go back in and to screen resolution again, and you can select either the landscape or the portrait orientation. In this case, we want landscape orientation for a widescreen monitor. At this point, you should have a display that fills your screen. Now it is time to connect up and power on the other monitors in the system. There's no need to power down your system for this step. Plug each monitor cable into an open DVI jack on the adapter cable. It doesn't really matter which ports you plug each monitor into because we'll fix this shortly. After they are all connected, power on each of the other three monitors. When each monitor is plugged in and powered on, the computer should recognize it. Now right click on an open area of the main screen and select screen resolution. At this point you should see icons of four monitors because it's recognized that you have four monitors connected. If you don't see four displays, click on the detect icon and they should be detected. Now you can, fig can configure the other three monitors in your system. Click on the identify button right under the detect button and you'll see that four numbers will pop up one on each monitor. You want to configure the four icons in the same configuration as the monitors are connected. So we have one, two on the bottom, three, four on the top. So Now drag and drop the icons on the display to put the monitors in the configuration that you're using. In this case, I'm using a 2x2 two two configuration, and I've used the Identify button to verify that my monitors are 1, 2, 3, and 4 going counterclockwise. At this point, click on the down arrow to the right of the display and verify that all four monitors match up with the make and model of the actual monitors that you are using. For any monitor that doesn't show the correct make and model number, go into the Advanced Settings tab and um, for that monitor, load the correct driver either from a disk or from a file that you have downloaded from the web. After all the monitors are correctly set up, pick the resolution that you want for each. Make sure they're all in the correct orientation, landscape or, or portrait. and then you want to make sure that under multiple displays it says extend desktop to this display. That will allow the computer to see all four monitors as one big display. At this point you're done. Click OK. Now your monitors are all set up and to the computer they should look like one big display. As you move the cursor around you should see the mouse follow seamlessly from one monitor to the next. As you open new windows, you are able to drag and drop the window into any monitor position that you want to. For NVIDIA software, if you do a search for Quadro NVS420 NVIDIA, you'll get to a page in which you'll see a place for drivers and downloads. If you download the software here, you will get access to something they call the NVIDIA Control Panel. When you open the Control Panel, you have access to a lot of adjustments on the card, mostly having to do with 3D settings. This is something that I don't use and this step is really optional. If you're doing extensive 3D modeling or gaming, you can go into this Manage 3D Settings and you can change all these different features and modes. 
Um, this is way beyond the scope of what I needed for my setup. I kept everything at the default setting. In summary, I am very happy with results and now I have a clean desktop with four displays for all my charts and graphs. I was able to upgrade from a dual monitor system to a four monitor system including the card, the mount, and the two new monitors for less than $350. I hope that you have found this video helpful and please do not hesitate to leave comments or send me an email at the address shown on the screen if you have questions. If you are a trader, please check out my website, tastytrader.net, where I have information related to educating individual investors on how to manage their personal investments using the Tasty Trade methods for trading stock options, ETFs, and futures. Thanks very much for watching.